Hi, Jenny here. Today is Monday, April 1st. Dun -dun. Happy April Fool's Day. I hope you don't have any jokes played on you today, or if you do, that they're just something more cute. I know I've seen a few cute little things online already this morning, so that I like. I like, I like the cute stuff. <laughs> Not the stuff that uh, can be more mean. Um, I remember, I think it was last year, that I think it was Starbucks or somebody put out like some drink that they supposedly had and it was like so super over the top. And then to kind of figure out, remember later, it's like, oh yeah, it's April 1st today. That, that's April Fool's. That, that wasn't something they were actually making. Let me know if you guys have had any jokes played on you or if you've seen anything cute or if you like to play jokes on other people and what you do. <laughs> My dad used to always do a something you know, say a something or whatever, and I'd be like, wait, what? And then he'd be like, April Fool's. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't remember anything specific right now, but I do remember that. So maybe something will come to me a little later today. So yesterday was Easter. Um, happy belated Easter, if you celebrate. And uh, if you do, then I hope you had a good time with your family or friends. We ended up having uh, Easter lunch here, which was good. It's one of those that normally I like to plan things ahead of time, and I, <laughs> I know what I'm doing usually for the week. But this one, it was just kind of, I knew Easter was coming, but I wasn't really thinking about it. You know, last weekend when we had our get-together, somehow I mentioned that, you know, oh yeah, Easter's coming next Sunday. And my daughter's boyfriend had said that uh, they were available if by chance we were doing anything for Easter. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll let you know. And... And on Sunday night, my husband had like a little pop go on in his ear. And he told me later, he's like, just to let you know, I kind of had this thing happen and my hearing seems less, and my tinnitus is worse. And, you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm like, okay. And then by Tuesday night, he actually had pain. So Wednesday, he went to the ER so on his birthday and found out he has an ear infection and he got drops for that. So kind of more thinking about that stuff and what was going on and so by I think like Thursday night I started thinking oh yeah Sunday's Easter by Friday I um, asked him if he was up for having the family over and stuff on Sunday and you know helping make the food and stuff and he said yeah he was feeling good so so that was good and my daughter and the boyfriend were still available to come over that was nice so I told my husband I'm like well if we have people coming over we're making food see if your mom and sister are available and um, he did, and they were, so that was very nice too, that such short notice. <laughs> I'm glad that they hadn't made plans and they were available, so they were able to um, come up here. So that was good. We had our table here. We, you know, put the extensions out, had it all nice and set up pretty, and made the usual of uh, ham, mashed potatoes, carrots, rolls, and then we just did fruit for dessert, seeing as we have a lot of chocolate in the house and that already, so <laughs> um, did a little taco salad. I think we did that too for snacks and had a lot of good conversation a lot of good visiting time so that worked out well and then um and lynn and tammy ended up going home tammy was still just not not feeling the best but it was good she was able to make it up here and visit so that was great and those guys live a little ways away so again they had had some travel time and then um so my daughter um mandy and reed they ended up hanging out here for a while and stuff and Ken also had it in my mind that if they were able to stay for a bit, we'd play a game. So we haven't done that in a while, and that's been fun when we've been together to do that. So we ended up playing Clue. So if you guys know the game, Clue or not. This was the board game from, from my childhood. <laughs> this is what it looked like, the store, what I bought. I remember I used to sing a song about Mr. Green. It was like, Mr. Big Stuff. <laughs> like we would point at him like, who do you think you are? Mr. Big Stuff. God, that just, that just came to me. I forgot about that. Anyways, so <laughs> we've played this before and we've played um, with family. And again, this is my game. As you can tell, it's very old. <laughs> it's yellowing. It's got cracks in the corners. I don't even know if the, the, the lid, I think the lid is still pretty solid. I don't think it's coming apart. Oh yeah, it's, it's coming apart. It's so old. But um, I like the board game. It's you know, the actual board. It's nice and colorful, the light reflecting off of it. But for all the different rooms and, and uh, 
what it looks like and then the cards. Very cute, colorful. So last year when my daughter was shopping, she decided <laughs> she decided she saw this game that it was a like a vintage. Um, it says what vintage bookshelf edition. And so we thought, well, we haven't played with this one yet, so let's let's do it. Let's get it out. So it comes out like a book. And uh, that's a little more boring. <laughs> we played with it last night, and a couple of us were like, it was very hard to keep track of our cards and which one we had. We had to keep looking at them and trying to figure out, um, yeah, the rooms and the people. And so this one's just a little more, wee, a little more, I don't know, basic, black and white, you know, boring per se. But, um, you know, Cassie kind of liked that part of it with the weapons that uh, for this one <laughs> like the rope the rope is actually a rope it's made out of rope whereas in my game it's made out of plastic but so that was different um, you know, the candlestick is still a big honking piece and then the only other thing that's kind of funny is the knife the other ones it looks more like a you know like a real a real knife whereas this one <laughs> I was thinking it was more like a butter knife it was a, but it's, it's still it's a knife but it still is kind of kind of interesting but in any case we played a couple rounds of that last night all right Easter dinner is done now we're gonna set up for the clue game yeah and well I shuffled all of them and I have to shuffle the set again there's a board vintage board and my daughters like to have the weapons in certain rooms. And we'll see how this goes. So that went really well. That was that was fun. And then um, Mandy and Reed left to go home and do some more of their own stuff. And then I got my exercises in. So that's been going well. Um, finally. I'm finally noticing a difference. <laughs> so, you know, I said in the other video about how, uh, you know, when I was sad, my sad day, that I was uh, feeling sad because part of it with my exercising, I wasn't feeling any difference. I wasn't feeling um, any progress. And so finally, th this week now, I can I can tell. I can stretch a little bit further. And I can do um, a couple things a little bit easier and do with spreading out my arms, like I'm doing the exercises and as far as like how far I can bring up my arms, like this hurts a little bit, but not bad, but I'm, I'm pretty straight out, whereas before I was down here. So even doing the arm exercises and doing the regular exercises, I'm able um, to move this arm a little bit better, a little bit more. Yeah. You know, my stoma has been fairly quiet. <laughs> A lot less so. When I first had it, she was very noisy. And now, said, you know, Rosie, um, has decided that with every video I make, she needs to make an appearance. She has stuff to say. <laughs> so anyways, that's, that's Rosie. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your input. <laughs> oh, where was exercising? So <laughs> I'm able to um, move a little bit better with all that. So that's that's very nice. And then I also noticed today when I took my shower that my stomach looks a little flatter. So I guess I am tightening up some of those muscles too, that that's working. Uh, so that's good. Because that one, where she gave me that, I'm doing the marching one, and to really hold the stomach tight, um, and to try to get up to 12. I can do eight fairly well at this point, to be, that I know I'm holding it, and then I can tell I'm releasing it to try to get more, you know, to try to get more in. But, um, I was like, oh, maybe that's kind of working. I'm actually looking a little flatter, so that's that's nice. <laughs> so yeah, had my shower this morning, changed my bag, and then I, I um, as I was wiping off the sticky material around the stoma, um, the barrier ring-like residue, I, I nicked my stoma with my nail, <laughs> and it started bleeding. I was like, shoot, but um, that's okay. It'll clot up. It's just a little something. As I said it's vascular. It can bleed like that if you yeah if you do a little something like that. But we're okay. <laughs> so that's good. So anyways, yeah, 
doing my exercises, getting all those done, and you know that's been good. Getting my walks in every day, and um, so that's still been good. Waiting, I'm kind of looking forward to the nicer, you know, weather, the warmer weather. In that, I could do it now, but um, to probably do two la two laps around my place instead of just one, because if I do the one and I still have energy left, I still feel good. In fact, I have you know I have energy all day these days, which is super nice, and um, it'll just be nice to to get a little bit more walking in further although I do my exercise and my walking is still that's a lot of movement for the day so that's good um, doing the walking well two things so I'm wearing compression socks I think I've mentioned that before that I bought um, some socks that have copper in them and they're also compression socks and so they go <laughs> I thought they were only gonna go halfway up my calf but they they stretch and they go pretty much up to my knees and um, bought these on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. But they also, so you know, they have um, little letters on them. So they are left and right. So there's a left sock and then you can barely tell it's an R, but there's a left and a right sock. I don't know how much it really matters, but you know, they put them on there. So I'll wear them that way. Um, but I have noticed in my walking the last two days, I've worn my short socks just because it's been a little bit warmer out and this is a lot of material. And I thought, well, to kind of keep myself a little bit cooler, I wore my shorter socks. And when we were walking yesterday, I could actually feel the neuropathy like up my calf. And now I have felt that before way in the beginning when it was first affecting me. It was, I could feel it in my legs. Whereas lately, like I really now only feel it when I'm shaving, that my legs feel pretty good. But then when I'm, sh when I'm, I'm shaving up my leg, I can, I can feel that like the touch, I'm like, it feels different. It's, it's still a little numbish, um, but okay. But in walking the last few days, I'm like, I could feel it more on that. So I've been trying to feel whether the acupuncture, again, is working, whether I'm feeling any difference in my feet and all that. And that way, I still feel it a little bit the same. Interestingly enough, this week, my right foot actually almost feels a little bit worse. <laughs> I feel it more on all the toes, whereas I was only feeling it in the, um, like, the big toe and the one next to it. So I don't know if things are supposed to kind of get worse before they get better or not. Um, and then in the left foot... The left foot feels okay, but it's again with the, the compression socks, it's good. But yeah, so I found that interesting that the compression socks are actually doing a little something and that. So, so at least something's kind of working. <laughs> Keep going with that and you can see how long um, I need to wear them. Hopefully, not through summer. I don't want to be wearing long socks in summer. Unless, if I'm wearing pants, I suppose that's fine. But if I'm going to be wearing shorts, um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, and then talking about <laughs> doing all the movement and walking and stuff, which is, is very good because uh, keeping everything moving. Um, I ate a salad last week for the first time, so I was excited about that, that I, I, I ate it and the body accepted it. I was good. I was, you know, didn't feel anything and different. And everything went, you know, um, everything went well as it should be. And then um, a couple days ago, my daughter had gone to Olive Garden and had gotten um, a steak meal and it came with Alfredo and she doesn't really eat the Alfredo and so they fed a genie Alfredo and so she brought that home knowing that I like that and so you know I'll eat the leftovers and I had some and that was the thing that when I had my first blockage I had had the um, cheesy ravioli for like two days in a row and then I think I'd also had some fettuccine from Olive Garden <laughs> so all that cheesy goodness was kind of what kind of um, this um, stuff <laughs> kind of uh, blocked up my gut a little bit. That's what we're assuming. And so, um, yeah, I had some of the Olive Garden and I thought again, okay, I've been good now for months because that happened in January, so February through March here, so two months and everything else has been going really well. And again, I'm moving and so everything is moving. And so I took half of the noodles that she brought home and I had that and I had some chicken with that. And the next day, it's about that 24 hour mark, as I figured that it takes my digestive system about 24 hours to process the food I'm eating. About that 24 hour mark, I had a stomach ache, that an intestinal ache that I could tell that was kind of the blockage ache. I was like, really? Really? <laughs> Shoot. It's like, I love fettuccine Alfredo. That's, you know, in Olive Garden, that's, the, that's what I order when I go there. If I'm not really having soup and salad, now that I can have salad again, I mean, at least I have that option. Um, but otherwise I would order a fettuccine alfredo with broccoli and it was like, 
it's so good. And even this stuff, it was so good when I ate it. I'm like, oh, I can almost have more. But I'm like, nope, again, same, I'm going to eat that. At least I know enough not to eat that two days in a row. Because, again, just making sure that my intestines can handle it, what's going to go. But that, uh, at this point in time, still so may seem it's, it's one food that I'm not going to be able to eat. I say everybody's different. Everybody has certain foods they can not tolerate. So I guess that's one for me. <laughs> oh, so anyways. They do sell the Alfredo sauce in the store, like next to the spaghetti sauce, and that's more liquidy, and that's what we usually use when we make it here at home. Um, I don't think I've had that even still since the surgery, um, but I think that's more of a liquidy cheesy than a really solid cheesy, so I might still be able to eat that, but we'll see. Let me try that. Again, I'll have a small portion and see how it goes. Yeah, this too. At least it was enough of, it was a little bit of a feeling that I could tell, and I could tell what it was, but it wasn't horrible. Um, I'm learning that much, at least, too, of making sure whatever I am, you know, I'm eating smaller portions, and to know, again, to not eat um, the, the same things two days in a row, if I know that my body hasn't already been able to handle it. So, still a learning process. I'm sure it will be for the rest of my life. It'll be new foods that I'm going to want to try and eat, and we'll see how it goes. So, that's that's how that went. <laughs> um, other than that, what's going on in April? I've got a few other things, but uh, what's going on in April? So I have my pelvic floor therapy sessions. I have those booked out through April. Again, we will see how um, how those go, how many I'm actually going to need. But so far, so good as whatever she's having me doing the exercises and stuff has been working and making progress. So that's good. I said I've got a couple more acupuncture sessions going. I may go for two more, so we'll do a six-week total and see. So we'll see if the acupuncture helps or not and see if I'm going to want to do any more sessions after that. I think six weeks is a good enough time to say that, you know, yeah, it's working or not working. Um, especially we'll be doing the third week now this time to see if I'm not really feeling any difference, but we'll give it a try. Give it a chance, and so be it. At least I tried it to see if it would help or not. And then I have my um, CT scan on the 17th. So that's that three-month checkup, make sure everything is still going okay. And then I have the um, oncologist appointment after that to get those test results and see where we go from there, which I'm assuming will be done um, in another three months. We'll do another scan to say that I am still cancer-free um, in remission. So that'll be um, what's going on so far for this month. So other than that, yeah, everything is going well. And talked about the intestines and you know the stoma and all that's going well the butt area it's it's good um it doesn't hurt to sit so just every once in a while as i'm doing something i may get some ache and at this point in time too it's almost even more like the butt cheeks i'm getting like chafing on there sometimes it's the actual area where they did the sew the sewing shut but just for the heck of it, if I'm getting too annoyed, I've got, got my cream back. I still have some of that cream left that we were using from when I had radiation. And the area was itching and um, kind of painful. So I had this Remedy Intensive Skin Therapy HydroGuard. So there's been a couple times the last week or so that I've put this on just because it does help. It also has some pain reliever in there. So I figured I'm you know use that on there <laughs> and try to heal up again the area the kind of again it's more of the chafing that's going on that's just kind of like eh, you know whatever so there's that there's my glasses my brand new glasses that i got so i'm still trying to get used to those talk to a few people and and um again as i said before from what i've learned with the progressives i guess you kind of just have to get used to them um, I wore them for driving for one of my last appointments. It was okay. I kind of had to figure out trying to see the rear view mirror and, the <laughs> and then seeing the uh, speedometer and that was a, I actually kind of had to put my glasses down here. <laughs> so I kind of wear my glasses normally, which my family laughs at me about, but you know, it is what it is. Um, actually, I don't think I went that far down. I just, instead of being way up, I think I just went partially down my nose so that I hit, you know, the sweet spot for distance. <laughs> that I could see well and then looking up in the mirror it was fine because otherwise when I'm up here and I'm looking in the mirror it's blurry and I almost kind of had to like put my pull my head back to try to see in, in the mirror and I'm like well duh so if I did this then I could actually just look and everything was good and I could see the speedometer and that's all good so for that it's okay um, and driving again it's 
right now I'm not really noticing a difference. I haven't driven when it's a little bit darker out yet, so we can see if that helps or not. Otherwise, I still see just as fine without the glasses, really, than with them uh, for distance. For close-up working on the computer, it's still just different in that I see clearly only in, like, this uh, This is my vision area, and I can only see clearly, like, right here. So in order to read even a sentence, if I see a full sentence, this area um, is blurred. This area will be clear. <laughs> So again, that's what I'm told, how the lenses are made, that you really have no, the peripheral vision is blurry. It, it just is. And I'm looking at a computer screen, and again, if I'm wearing just my readers, everything is clear. And so that's just what I'm used to and works better for me at this point in time. So again, as time goes and maybe my eyes, my, if my eyes change more, again, these will also work at that point in time and work better. But for now, I can just not wear them around the house because I can see far enough away and just and that's all just fine and then when I'm reading and whatever I'll wear my others and if I need something stronger than my regular readers I have like my 2.0 glasses but I'll wear these or like I said they'll be good if you know I'm going out like I have a reunion coming up <laughs> in August um so I figured yeah if I'm going to be there if I'm going to need to read anything and if I'm going to be needing to see distance I can wear them for something like that and um I'm also going to be going to a concert we just bought tickets for um, TXT, the Korean band. <laughs> First one that my daughters got me into that was one that I still really like and follow all the time. Um, we went to their concert a couple years ago. And it was one of the first concerts that when they started doing concerts after the whole like COVID shutdown and everything and they started doing things again. So we've gone to that concert and that was, was a whole lot of fun and good. And now they're coming again. And nicely, my daughters will hang out with me and let me come with. <laughs> And we're going to that concert in June. And so I figured, again, yeah, for concerts, something like that, I try those classes and maybe it'll work for that. But, so that's that update. I was going to put on, I took a bath last week and I forgot I was going to do my eyes and um, the last ones of my eye and mouth little patches and I forgot. And then I was going to do them today, this morning. And I thought, oh yeah, I'll do that after my shower. I'm not gonna put any um, cream on. <clears throat> And that's how I'm going to do a video. I had to put some makeup on. And I'm putting my makeup on and going, oh yeah, I was going to do those eye masks. <laughs> so I guess I'll do those tonight maybe after I um, take off my makeup and wash my face. So if I remember, I'll do them or else save them for another day. <laughs> but other than that, um, it is now probably past noon. It's, yeah, it's 1.30. This is how my days go. It's time to eat. <laughs> I pretty much wake up around 9-ish. And it's just what it is. I keep trying to wake up earlier and I do on days I have doctor's appointments and I'm just so tired. <laughs> the body wants to sleep until nine because most nights I still don't sleep well. I toss and turn a lot and I wake up every time I toss and turn and then of course I get up at least some point in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and um, so in order for me to get enough sleep <laughs> I go to bed well, probably between 11 and 12 and then I you know get up at nine. And uh, I do a little, I do a little good morning post on the computer and um, I just don't, don't do too much else with that. And then I'm going to do my exercises and that takes till like 11-ish. And then depending on a day if I want to shower or not, obviously the shower takes time. And if I'm going to change my bag, that takes some extra time. And then also I don't want to eat because once you eat, it gets the intestines moving. And, um, and then you'll have output. And so it's kind of like, okay, then I don't eat. <laughs> until I get my bag changed and um, so then it's finally time to eat so it's like yeah always 11 o'clock ish or so you know I'm eating breakfast and then I don't have lunch until like 1 <laughs> oh so sometimes I'm hungry for dinner at 5 when my husband comes home or we've been eating 6 or sometimes I'm eating dinner at 7 which I never understood people that did that because we are you know I always ate dinner at 5 but now I'm at that point in life everything's getting pushed back <laughs> But it's okay, it still works. So on that note, I hope you guys are all feeling well. Thank you for joining me again on another video. I appreciate you, appreciate uh, you joining me, all your comments, and hearing all about what's going on in your life. So I hope things are well. You guys, keep it positive. Go make it a great day. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I left this up a little higher because you have the little um, Lego creatures up there, <laughs> all the animals. My daughter built um, five of those over spring break this year. The other ones she built uh, over Christmas, or maybe last year's spring break. But she's got a whole bunch more up in her bedroom, but I just thought I'd kind of include them in here of what she's all made. They're pretty cute. She does a good job with those. 
I don't know as though I'd be able to do that. That's a lot of, a lot of small work, a lot of, and then her hands hurt afterwards anyways, but she does a good job and they're cute.